if you'd like to follow along, I'm going to be in the book of Colossians. The epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Colossians, chapter 1. And I want to begin reading in verse 3. And read to verse 10. Verse 3. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful, a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to read you a statement from Thomas Fuller. I don't know a lot about Thomas Fuller. I didn't check into it, but I like this. Zeal without knowledge is fire without light. I like that. I'm very, very much afraid that's true. Uh, Paul said it. They have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. And that's somewhat what we're surrounded by today. My title today is called The Knowledge of Believers. Knowledge of Believers. And before I get started, I'm going to give you my conclusion. The conclusion is this. Believers are given knowledge by God. That's the conclusion. Then we'll, we'll work toward it as I go here. Now, I do know, there is you know, scripture, that knowledge puffeth up. That's not what Paul's writing about here. You understand? Even religious knowledge can puff up. Even true doctrine can puff up, knowledge of it. But this is not true of the knowledge given by our Lord Jesus Christ. Given to every believer by the Holy Spirit. And in here, in these first ten verses, Paul wrote to the Colossians telling us three specific things which we, believers, well in verse 2, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ. We, and I include ourselves in that, we know three specific things. In these verses, he tells us. Now, Paul is not writing, and I want to just say this very clearly, he's not writing as a superficial knowledge. He's not writing the way children learn the multiplication table. If they still do that, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it used to be, it used to be a big thing. You know, I, I went to college before I ever got a calculator. You want to know why? Because they weren't invented before then. And man, if you got a programmable calculator, which came out and you could slightly afford in my second or third year of college, you had, you were, you had it made. Now kids go to, go to school today with computers, laptops, tablets, smartphones. Anyway, 
That's not the knowledge Paul's talking about, as such as in memorizing facts. The Greek word Paul uses here denotes, and this is what it means, being fully acquainted with it. It means discernment and understanding. That's the kind of knowledge Paul's writing about here. We have been given true knowledge by the Holy Spirit and through his word. Through the word of God. Now, the first one is in Colossians 1 and verse 6. Where it says, Which is come unto you as into all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it. And, what? Knew the grace of God in truth. In truth. Oh, my. Well, this is the first thing i got to tell you. Now, we're going to get real deep here, okay? The grace of God is true. The grace of God is true. And that's what Paul is writing of here. The grace of God. Because I'm going to tell you something. God's grace, the grace of God, is different than religious grace. You understand? Religious grace and what is preached around all around us and all across America and most of the world is this. Religious grace is this. You do something, God will do something. That's not grace. That's not grace. You understand? The grace of God is He's going to do something when you want Him to do the exact opposite. When you want him to leave you alone, he won't. Not if you're one of his, and not if it's your time. Understand? There are times when God was dealing with me when I was evidently regenerated, but not completely converted, and didn't know what was going on, that I wished God would leave me alone. And yet it showed me another verse of Scripture. And when I got to John 6, I about pitched a fit. I did. <laughs> I didn't get it. No man can come unto me except it be given unto him of my Father. Now wait a minute. See, I believe, you know, Jesus knew who was going to be saved. I believe that. But I didn't, I didn't think God dictated who would be saved. That it was his choice and not my choice. And so I asked somebody about it. And you know what they told me? They told me a very good thing. What does it say? What does the book actually say? And I said, well, it says this. And that must be what it means. And they were right. And I thought to myself, seriously, I mean, I had to, you know, you have discussions in your head, which some of them you don't say out loud, which is a good thing, but... I had this discussion within myself thinking, well, that's what Christ said. And he's God. And I'm not. So I guess it's right. I didn't have, I, you know, seriously, I, I mean, I was a very, very young believer. Well, you saw me that young. <laughs> I was actually younger than that when this happened, by a year or two, 22 years old, 43 years ago almost. Time flies when you don't pay attention. But I remember reading that, and I looked, and I thought, okay, God said it, doesn't matter whether I know anything about it, it's got to be right. And it was. And it is. Because I read on. I was at John chapter 6 and verse 44. No man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. That's John 6, 44. And I finally came to this thing. I, well, okay. I don't quite get it, but I believe it because Christ said it. Okay? Then I get to John 6, 665. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, 
that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. And from that time, actually it says from that, time is interpolated there, from that statement, I'm going to tell you this right now, from what Christ said, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And I said, because I was close to rejecting what he had said before. And then Jesus said unto the twelve, look at his disciples, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, I love this part, to whom shall we go? There is nowhere else to go. And you will realize that as a believer. I'm going to tell you something. That's grace. That's grace. Thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. What? To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And I, thought, I looked at that and I read that and I said, Me too, Peter. That's exactly my reaction to John 6, what, 44. Was their reaction to John 6, 65. Christ said it. It's right. Whether I get it or not. But he said it twice. Well, you don't have to hit me with a hammer, thankfully, this time. Maybe later. But you understand, that's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. I got, there's a, I'm going to read you just a verse, a song. This is by Joseph Kent. And I heard Henry quote this on the way up here, and I found it. It's in Gatsby's hymns, number 407. But anyhow, Charles Spurgeon said that some of the people in his church didn't like this one verse in this song. I want to read it to you because it's good. And that's why they didn't like it. Here's pardon full for sin that's past. It matters not how black they're cast. Now, everybody loves that part. But here's the rest of it. And oh my soul with wonder view for sins to come, here's pardon too. And that give you chill bump. Because that is grace. And if you got a problem with that verse of that song, go look at Romans and see where David wrote, Paul quoted that David wrote, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Amen. Folks, that's future. And it's just as future now as it was then. Oh, I like that. I do. Uh, oh, my soul, with wonder view, for sins to come, there's pardon too. That's the grace of God that believers know. We have a knowledge of His grace. Oh, you understand? That's a far cry from you take the first step and God will meet you there. Oh, no, no. You believe and God will give you eternal life. Listen, folks. Uh, well, Carol Poole said it last week here. Dead person can't take a step and a dead person can't believe. The natural man knoweth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them. For they are spiritually discern life comes before faith it always has and it always will oh dead men cannot come and here's the other thing dead men will not come the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit of God and I'm going to tell you something the grace of God is a spiritual thing it's a spiritual thing. Stephen preached just before they stoned him. 
just before they stoned him. <coughs> Stephen preached that those uncircumcised in heart and ears, those who have uncircumcised heart and ears, who's the natural man, natural as he is born, unregenerate, what? Do always resist the Holy Ghost. Now, you, <laughs> I, got, I got to tell you a funny story. Well, it's not all that funny, but it is to me. There are people who will take that scripture and say that, oh, you see, men can resist the Holy Ghost. God won't force you to be saved. God won't force you. Jesus Christ never forced anybody to do anything except for some very profane people to get out of his father's temple. He never took a quart of whips and beat anybody into the temple, but he did remove some people from the temple. But here's the thing. He can make you willing to come to him. You'll be willing when you come. Oh, if you can come, you will. And if you will come, it means you can. Oh, I like that. God's grace always, and this is the thing. God's grace gives us the opposite of what we deserve. It's not just God giving us what we don't deserve. He gives us the exact opposite. We deserve eternal death, and he gives eternal life. Oh, I like that. And he gives that eternal life, what? To as many as the Father gave to him. Oh, we deserve hell. And he gathers us to himself. He's going to bring all his people together in one. And there's going to be, make no mistake about it, there's going to be one flock and one shepherd. And he's the good shepherd, we're the flock. And there's only one. Oh, I like that. He's promised, promised us an inheritance in the heavens undefiled. <laughs> that fadeth not away. <laughs> Christ promised us, and I believe Gentiles in particular, when he said, many are going to come from the east and come from the west and sit down, sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Folks, on our, of ourselves, we got no business being there. But oh, he makes us meet. He makes us meet. He fits us to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. By his grace. By his grace. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 6 says this, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Oh, I like that. Believers have a knowledge of His grace. Of His grace. Believers know they haven't earned anything from God except the wages of sin. And believers know they don't deserve his mercy and grace. And believers have been given a knowledge of the grace of God by Jesus Christ. Oh. Secondly, in verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with with the knowledge of his will. Of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's the kind of knowledge he's talking about. Oh, I like that. Believers have a knowledge of the will of God. Hey, this book's full of it. I'm going to tell you something. Everything that happened in this book is from the will of God. Everything that's happening now comes from the will of God. Because the will of God is of supreme 
importance. All of his sovereign power directs and is directed by his will. And his will, I like this part, directs his grace and mercy. The will of God directs it. God told Moses, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Amen. That's as simple as that and as profound as that. It's as complex as that. Oh, I like that. Then he said this, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. The will of God is supreme in grace and and in mercy. And believers know this. Christ himself told us the Father's will. It's in John, John 6, 39. And, this is Christ speaking, and this is the Father's will. You want to know what the Father's will is. You want to know what the will of God is. Christ told us himself. And it's recorded in the scriptures. This is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the Father's will. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy to whom I'll show mercy. And those that the Father gave to Christ are going to be Christ. Actually, they are Christ. And they always shall be Christ. Oh, we can, we can lose our minds. We can rebel. We can fight. We can fuss. We can, we can cuss. But you understand, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And he's not going to lose a one. Not one person. That's the Father's will. Christ will raise us up at the last day. I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. Christ will be gracious to all that the Father gave to him by the will of the Father. According to the will of God. And we are saved by His grace. According to the will of God. Oh. You understand? You know, if God be for you, who can be against you? Well, God is for us. That's what this says. The will of God is for us. God's will is for His people. It doesn't matter who's against you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to tell you something. Nobody's getting in God's way. Or they may think they're going to show somebody something. They, they said they're going to try and kill you. And in killing you, they think they're doing God a favor. They're wrong. If it's one of God's sheep. Oh, God is for us and God's will is for us. Jesus Christ himself was delivered at the hands of wicked men, crucified and slain, according to the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. And that was for us. That was the will of God. I mean, the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. They did it, and they did it by wicked hands. They did it by wicked hands. Oh, they meant it for evil. God meant it for good. And it didn't change the incident one way or another. That was going to happen according to his determinate counsel and foreknowledge. God's will is for us. That's what it means. According to the will of the Father. Because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for the sin and the sins of his people. The perfect substitute. He took our place. 
according to the will of the Father. It's also according to the scriptures. Read Isaiah 53. You got any questions? Oh my. He was the perfect sacrifice according to the perfect, holy, righteous will of God. And now, according to his will, we give thanks and praise to God. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says this, In everything, give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Concerning me. Give thanks for the will of God. Oh my. And here's the thing. The will of God is good. <laughs> you know? We don't always see it as good. We don't always know it is good. But it's good. It's good. The natural man can't see it. The unbeliever won't have it. They'll deny it. They'll fight against it. They'll rebel. But believers love the will of God. Oh my. Because all of his promises in Christ are yea and amen. The will of God is good. And God's will has purposed the salvation of his people. And he made that salvation not possible, not available. He made it sure. It's in his son. And his son's not going to fail. All that the father gave to him, they're going to come to him. And him that cometh to him, I'll in no wise cast out. I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. The foundation of God, I said it earlier, that foundation stands sure. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Do you understand? The foundation ain't got nothing to do with us. Except we're the ones that He knew. We don't keep the foundation sure. We're not helping shore up the foundation. We're not propping it up. No, no, no. The foundation sure, God knows. And God has will that every one of his people come to him through his son, by his son, in his son. God's will is purpose the salvation of his people. And the will of God in Jesus Christ provided the salvation of his people. We have a knowledge of the will of God. Now, verse 10. After we have to be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful at every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. We have a knowledge of himself. We have a knowledge of the grace of God, we have a knowledge of the will of God, and we have a knowledge of God himself. Now notice here, very clearly, we are told by the Apostle Paul to increase in the knowledge of God. We are not told anywhere to obtain the knowledge of God. It's a gift. We are told to increase it. We are told that. Believers have a knowledge of God given by Jesus Christ and we are told to increase in the knowledge of God. What does it say? John 17 verses 2 and 3. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, these are the words of Christ in his prayer to God, the Father, that he has, he has given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast 
given him. And, here's another one, that this is life eternal. Want to know what it is? It's written right in the Bible. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. He gives eternal life. He gives the knowledge of himself. He gives the knowledge of God. Eternal life is a gift of Jesus Christ that they know Christ and the Father. Oh my. What Christ told his disciples. He that has seen me has seen the Father. I and my Father are one. Oh, I like that. They know Jesus Christ is God. Believers do. Manifest in the flesh believed on in the world how by faith the faith of which Jesus Christ is the author and finisher Amen. That's true. he gives faith you're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves it's the gift of God. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And boy, we like boasting. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which he hath ordained that we should walk in them. Oh. Oh, we have a knowledge of God. We have a knowledge of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh. And that knowledge is to increase. Paul said it several times. One day I might preach on that. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. I'm going to tell you something. Pay attention. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Paul said it more than once. We have a knowledge of God. We have a knowledge of His grace. We have a knowledge of His will. And we have a knowledge of Himself. God Himself. <coughs> In 2 Peter, we are warned against the error of the wicked. And, this is 2 Peter 3.18, But grow in grace... And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be glory both now and what? Forever. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a gift. To his people. He gives it. And we are to grow thereby. What? We're to listen to his gospel when it's preached. Now, if the gospel's not being preached, you don't have to listen. But if the gospel's being preached, you better listen. We are to study his word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Believers are to learn more by him, of him. Because here's the thing. If you know Christ, you believe Christ, you love Christ. You know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ is magnificent to his people. He ain't much of nothing to anybody else. If you really want to know the truth of it. The long and the short of it is this. Jesus Christ is really nothing to the world. They think they celebrate his birthday at Christmas. But that ain't it. They're just looking for presents. That's all I was doing when I was a kid. You understand? But Jesus Christ is magnificent. To believers. To believers. You understand? Believers 
want to know more. They want to hear of Him. They want to learn of Him. By Him, from Him. Oh, I like that. And here's the thing. You keep going. Believers want to know more. More. And to know Christ Jesus makes you want to come to Him. And after you come to Him, you keep coming. You keep coming. You understand that Gadarene demoniac, where was he when it's done? He was clothed in his right mind and sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ. That's where believers want to be. And he wanted to follow him. And he did follow him by Christ sending him home. He did that in more than one place. There were other people in the Gospels who wanted to follow Christ, and Christ said, no, go home and tell them what happened. He told some, don't tell what happened, and they went and told it anyway. <laughs> it didn't surprise him. It didn't surprise him. Believers want to sit at his feet and to learn about him what? from himself. From himself. Believers want to hear his gospel. They rejoice in his word. And believers are glad to come to the house of the Lord. Oh, I like that. Teach me and I shall be taught. Give us an understanding of your scripture. To know the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. We have, believers have, a knowledge of God. Last thing, all true knowledge comes from God, from God. Look at verses 11 through 14 of Colossians chapter 1. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power and all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Oh my, I like that. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Even future sins. That's grace. Oh, I like that. Believers know He has made us meet. Because I'm going to tell you something. Believers know we aren't meet in and of ourselves. But He has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He's given us an inheritance. He's delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And you understand, once he's put you, translated you into the kingdom of his dear son, that's that strong habitation I talked about a couple weeks ago. You're not coming out. You're not coming out. If he's translated you in, you're staying in. Because Christ is going to raise you up at the last day. He's promised. He's promised. Oh, I like that. In Him, God's dear Son, Jesus Christ, we have redemption. Oh. <laughs> through His blood. And yes, the forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of sin. All of a believer's hope is in Him and is Him. He is our hope. A believer knows the salvation of God is totally from God. And we are, oh, I love this verse, we are complete in Him. In Him. 
not in ourselves. What's it say? <coughs> Excuse me. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Come unto me, all ye that are labor, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest. Now, we read that and we love that. I do. I like it. But I also like what follows it, which some people have a tendency to leave off. It says, take my yoke upon you. What? And learn of me. Learn from me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find, what? Rest unto your very souls. Rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Learn of me. Learn of me. Learn from me. Knowledge and understanding come from Christ to his brethren by his Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me, because the Spirit takes the things of Christ and shows them to you, to His people. I like that. He takes the things of mine and will show them unto you. That's a promise of God. Oh, I like that. And you know that? Believers want that. Believers want that that's what I want I want to learn of him they willingly learn of him willingly Charles Wesley wrote it this way in a song save us in thy great compassion O thou mild pacific prince Give the knowledge of salvation, give the pardon of our sins. By thy all-sufficient merit, every burdened soul release. By the shining of thy spirit, guide us into perfect peace. <laughs> Believers have knowledge of his grace, they have a knowledge of his will, and they have a knowledge of himself. And you know what? Continue. Continue. You are my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word. Continue. What? Learn of me. Learn from me. Because Jesus Christ brought us by his grace, through his will, to himself. And we have that knowledge what? in earthen vessels. You understand? It's not the vessels that are worthwhile, it's the knowledge. It's not the vessels, it's the Spirit. It's not the vessels, it's Christ. In you, the hope of glory. But we've been given this knowledge. Rejoice. Study, learn, grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time, this place. Thank you for all that you've done for us and for all that you've given to us. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who redeemed us from all sin, by his own shed blood and his own sacrifice for our sin took him upon himself and paid the debt we couldn't pay. Be with Paul and be with Walter as they come to preach your gospel and we'll give you all the praise and the honor and the glory because it is yours now and forever. Amen.